are demons real? My desire for you at the end of this video is for you to ask yourself the question, what do you think about the supernatural? Do you think demons are real? Do you think they're just a figment of our imagination? Is it all entertainment? Today, the video that we're going to watch that I'm going to react to, it's going to make you have to ask the question whether or not this is fake or real. A lot of you are already going to write this off before you even watch it, but let me just tell you this. If this video is, at the very least, fake, you're going to have a good time watching it. It'll entertain you. But if this is real, this woman who's getting baptized in the ocean, who all of a sudden begin, begins manifesting a demon, if this spiritual reality that you see in this video is real, it's going to force you and me to ask some questions about how much we are, A, living in right standing with God, and B, how much are we doing the very things that he's called us to do? I got a lot of thoughts after watching this video I'm going to share with you after, but let's behold this amazing, this amazing video of this woman who is getting baptized and then the unthinkable happens. Just check it out. Got a Passover. Passover. Amen. Amen. You're not welcome. Let her go. Come out. 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 I can already see the comments before I even read them. I know it's going through a lot of your heads, especially those who don't know Christ or those who are bound in religion and don't pay attention to what the word of God says would happen today. We'll talk about that shortly, but nevertheless, happy you're here. And, uh, oh my gosh, this is a good, good, good. Cray cray. Let's watch the rest of the video. This is intense. Come out. 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 Come how a minute, 17 seconds into this video, they're about to baptize this woman. By the way, she is freely choosing to be baptized. And, and at least from what I see, no one's got a gun to her head. No one's making her get in the water. She is choosing to get into the water in her own accord. And as soon as she begins to uh, about to get baptized, she begins to manifest what seems to be a demonic manifestation. The men who are baptizing her begin to pray, and then they begin to pray in tongues. Now, some of you are like, no, they're not praying in tongues. They're just praying in gibberish. This is a paid actor. This is like the, you know, the biggest farce I've ever seen. You're free to believe that. Until you've seen it uh, as regularly as I have or other Christians have, I can understand why you'd think that way. Nevertheless, here's all the things that are happening right now. Now the lady's coughing. She's coughing as he's commanding the spirit to come out of her. Interesting stuff. Did she just levitate? What on earth did I just see? Hold up. I'm just curious now. Okay. So when she walks in, when she walks in, look at that. Look how tall she is. She's about, she's about as tall as this guy. They're both standing. Same height. Is 
Is she standing on her tippy toes? Maybe. I don't know. I, I mean, that just straight up looked like she came out of the water. I'm not about to say what it wasn't, but man, I mean, it just looked yeah, like what it looks like. Maybe she's just standing on her tippy toes. Regardless. I, by the way, the reason why I say this is because it does, I mean, if you've ever, save, you know, the movie The Exorcist. The reality is, is that when you do deliverance on people, supernatural stuff can occur. You can have people start levitating out of their seat. It's like, it's nuts. The spirit realm is crazy, man. Love it. No fear. All boldness. Taking authority over it. Come out of her right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. If there's any unclean spirit, I command you to identify yourself right now. My man looks like an MMA fighter. Look at that cauliflower here. My man. That's what's up. Look at her. Thank you for delivering my Look at her. Thank you, Lord. Look at her countenance. Are you kidding me? Amen. That's crazy. Amen. 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 Look at the freedom in here. The Lord is good. You confess Jesus Christ as Lord today. He's yes, Lord of your life. Yes, sir. You, you believe He died for your sins and He rose on the third day. Amen. I now baptize you in the name of Now he's going to actually do the baptism. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Look at her. And thank you. They're praying for her to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I love it. I love it. I love it. That's the freedom of deliverance. That's the, that's the face of deliverance right there. Deliver, set free. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Now she's receiving the ability to pray in tongues. Praise God. Praise God. All right. Well, let's look at some scripture, shall we? Romans chapter 6. You might be thinking, why is this happening? This didn't happen to me when I got baptized. It's not going to happen to everybody when they get baptized. So don't worry about it. But listen to this. Why is baptism so important? Is baptism just like a symbolic event? Does it matter if you were baptized as a baby and they just like sprinkled some water on your head like a Cabbage Patch Kid? Or should you get fully submerged? Well, you see in the Bible, baptism was all about full submersion. Why? I'll read it for you right here. What shall we say then? Romans chapter six. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. So what is baptism? Jesus commanded his disciples to be baptized so that we could identify with the death of Jesus when he died on the cross, destroying the works of the devil once and for all. You go under the water as if you're in the grave. You come out of the water as if you're being resurrected with Jesus. In my opinion, it's way, it's way more than symbolism. And I think this video over here, gives us a reason why to believe that there is a supernatural work that occurs when you're being baptized because what you're doing is you you are living out the crucifixion of Jesus Christ you're being you're putting to death your own sinful nature and rising up out of the water in the righteousness of Christ and let me tell you if you're a demon and you've had a really good time living inside of a person and you've been using that person as a means to get your fill of, of sin and lust and all that sort of stuff. When somebody gets crucified, you know what that is? It's an eviction notice. It's saying, devil, time for you to come out. So, of course, the devil is going to be pretty upset about that. And they might even shriek. In fact, we see biblical precedents for this. Acts chapter 8, verse 7. For unclean spirits, this is the book of Acts, by the way. Jesus was 
uh, had already ascended to heaven. This is the early church, the disciples doing this. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. Isn't that, uh, I just love, I love the kingdom of God. We're still doing this today. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. Jesus said to his disciples, I commission you and I give you all authority of, uh, under heaven to cast out devils and to heal the sick in my name. And this is what happens in Luke ten seventeen. Then the 70 returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. That's why when you are doing deliverance, you say in the name of Jesus, come out. It's not the name of Cap Chatfield. It's not your flesh. It's not your works. It's not your religion. It's not, it's none of that. It's in the power of the name of Jesus alone. The disciples were like, Lord, this is awesome. Are you kidding me? You told us to go cast out these demons. And they actually, actually listen to us when we tell them to do this in your name. I'm going to show you this final scripture. Matt, Mark chapter, uh, chapter, Mark chapter 16, verse 14. Later, he, Jesus, appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. This is after Jesus was crucified and he rose again. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This is the great commission. This is what you as a believer in Jesus Christ, this is what I as a believer in Jesus Christ, we are all called to do this. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Not my words, Jesus' words. Give your life to Jesus, repent, turn from your sin, put your faith in Jesus and his finished work on the cross and the power of the resurrection. Receive forgiveness for your sin and the power of the Holy Spirit to live a changed life in Jesus' name. Verse 17, and these signs will follow those who believe. Watch this. These, it doesn't say these signs might follow those who believe. These signs will follow those who are my original 12 disciples? Are the original apostles that uh, birthed the church? No. All those who believe, all, and these signs will follow those who believe. If you don't believe this stuff, even as a Christian, if you're an unbelieving believer, God bless you, but here's let this challenge you. If you're an unbelieving believer, you believe in God enough to get saved, but not to actually do the works that Jesus commissioned all of us to do, you're not going to see this stuff. You're not going to see any of this stuff happen. You might be like, I never see that happen. It's like, well, you don't believe it. And when you see it happen, I hope this challenges you to say, okay, I want to take a fresh look at the word of God and what Jesus did and what his disciples did and the early church did and what people are still doing today because the demonic world, the demonic realm, still active, baby. We are still in a spiritual battle. And you and I have authority over the devil in Jesus' name to set the captives free if we believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. How about that? You just saw that, people praying. I'm going to show you one more scripture, actually, to make sense of all of that. Verse 18, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Final thing I'm just going to show you, because you might be thinking, okay, so what are they doing? They're praying in an unknown language. Watch what happens in Romans 8, chapter 26. Especially when you're doing something like that, where you're like, I am just trying to be obedient. I want to set this person free. A demon's manifesting. I wasn't preparing for it today. Here we are. What do we do? When you don't know what to pray, watch what happens. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. The Bible also talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 that the ability to pray in tongues is a gift from God to help us edify ourselves. When we know not what to pray, and we've like lost the ability with vocabulary to put together the words for what we're asking for, you yield your tongue to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will begin to pray through you with groanings and utterances that can't be understood by man, yet are the perfect will of God. That's what you saw in this picture, in this video. Some are going to say it's fake. Um, those who 
are curious and have the humility to look at the word of God and say, yeah, this checks out. And those who are hungry for more, my prayer for you is that you dig deeper, that you would ask the Holy Spirit to lead you into scenarios where you can set people free. That's what we're here for. If you if your only goal was to get saved so you can wait to go to heaven, you'd be in heaven right now. Jesus wants you and me to fulfill his work of destroying the works of the devil while we're on planet earth, advancing God's kingdom, preaching the good news, winning souls, healing the sick, casting out devils, raising the dead, the whole gamut. We are called to do everything that he commanded us to do until he comes back. Amen. Let me know what you think in the comments. I love to see it personally. I want to see more stuff like this. Let's normalize the supernatural. Let's normalize the move of God. Amen. Subscribe for more if you enjoyed this, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.